impacts all of us? Ah, okay. So uh, the title um, is uh, Connected Vehicles When Information Highway Hits the Asphalt. And you might not realize it, but our cars, or actually each one of them is a computer network. Each car out there possesses about 100, 120 computers all wired together, all performing a specific operation. And um, things like power steering, like fuel injection, like um, um, uh, ABS braking, and a variety of other functions. And all those operations are networked together in your vehicle. And all of that is to provide some sort of support to the human operator uh, for a number of applications, including safety. So what co connected vehicles is, takes this idea of a networked vehicle, where these parts of a vehicle are all connected together, into connecting each vehicle together to enhance safety and other sorts of operations. And so as a result, information is key for driving. It's no longer gasoline. It's no longer, let, let's say, um, um, like let's say the oil uh, that's in your engine and the like. It's not, not these mechanical features anymore. Th that technology has sort of stayed stationary over the last few decades. Now it's really, these vehicles are becoming um, sources of information just like the internet has. So I'm going to start everything off with a quiz. quiz. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Okay. So, so here's, uh, here's my query to all of you. Okay. What do you get when you have, you know, a several ton snowplow collide with a 2005 Toyota Corolla? Um, I believe that's the CE model. What you get, unfortunately, is a totaled Toyota Corolla. And you might say, OK, this is cool. Uh, why is he asking, uh, asking all of us or showing this? That's actually my Toyota Corolla. <laughs> so what happened last year, my wife and I, we were like 1,000 feet away from the entrance to our driveway of a dead end street just north of Worcester. And what happened was we were driving up. The, the, the driving conditions were slightly impaired. And unfortunately, we had a town snowplow truck come down and collide with us on our way home. And unfortunately, physics took over, and uh, you know, Toyota versus uh, Corolla versus snowplow truck, snowplow truck always wins. And so you might say, well, what? How does this look like? What? What does? What? What? What sort of road do you live on? That's what our road looks on. Do you see? Do you see the snowplow in that? No, no, not at all, right? Um, in fact, uh, this was taken the day after the, the, the car accident last year in February. And so what happens is, when you're driving, the driver essentially is making all these decisions. And decisions are based on what sort of information surrounds us, right? Where are all the vehicles? Is it nighttime? Is there deer? Uh, what are the road conditions? Is there ice? What are, what are sort of the environmental parameters that allow us to be safe when we drive on the road, right? We make these decisions in, in um, fractions of a second all the time, when we're in traffic, when we're on like an interstate, or in a dark uh, backcountry road. And so the question, do you see the oncoming snowplow? If you had some sort of information that goes beyond your sight, because right now, most of your decision-making processes that are external to the car are mostly visual. There are a few cars that have like LiDAR, but more likely they have like ultrasonic, like sonar in the front and back bumpers, but that's very short range. What I'm talking about is there's a technology that's beginning to get much more attention lately called connected vehicle technology. What happens is now every vehicle out there, or this is the plan, will have a wireless device that you plug in to those 120 computers on your car. So this would be the 121st computer that plugs in with an antenna in much the same way that with your laptops. Oh, I need Wi-Fi. Click. Now I have Wi-Fi on my laptop. Imagine your cars have much the same thing. You have a wireless device that's built in, or maybe you add on. You modify afterwards, and then you're driving, and then it's like, dee 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 car coming, like uh, take, take, uh, you know, take uh, evasive maneuvers, slow down. What a lot of folks do on this road, like you know, when, when I normally go up this road, I usually slow down because I can't see more than 20 feet ahead of me. It's a double blind turn. There's a blind, there's a blind um, uh, where, where that red square is. That's one turn. There's actually a second one at the crest of the hill. 
Imagine if I had a technology, a wireless transponder of, a, let's say, a kid coming down with their car, and it says, hey, I'm coming down at this speed, I'm going this fast, my brakes are not engaged, and I'm located at this point on the road. And then let's say that's tied to a Google Maps that's attached to, let's say, the front console of your car, and you can see all the cars within, let's say, 100 meters of your location, so you have complete sensory awareness of all other vehicles around. That is called connected vehicles. And you might say, okay, why haven't I heard about it? Or maybe I heard a murmur of this. Well, what happens is just like with a, a lot of other technologies out there, uh, usually things don't really happen full scale until it's made law, okay, until the government requires it. So for instance, seat belts. Like, you know, I remember a day, it's like, you know, well, maybe not me, but I've heard folks, oh, seat belts are optional, you don't really need to put them on, until um, one day it's like, you know what, seat belts save lives, let's make this mandatory. Everybody has to wear seat belts, right? And so that's one thing. How about 2008? What's the big event in 2008 with cars? Tire pressure monitoring systems. So if you bought a car in 2008 or, 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 or after that, your cars, all your tires, have a little pressure sensor that says, okay, um, uh, your tire pressure is 25% below the threshold that it should be to be properly inflated. It's going to set up a warning light, and you pull over and you fill that tire. What caused that? The Firestone uh, tire uh, explosion car accident um, incident many years ago where people's tires were bursting, car acts, um, not only bursting, but rolling over and the like. And then, of course, uh, uh, right now, under consideration, is rear-facing cameras. So, like, you know, on the more sort of luxury brands of cars, you have a little camera in the back. Some Priuses have that, too. When you back up, you actually see everything behind you. That's soon going to be mandated by law. All cars, like, let's say, 2015 or 2016 and beyond that, will be equipped with uh, rear-facing cameras because it's a great sef safety technology. So in February of 2014, the U.S. Department of Transportation uh, announced that they're going to take steps to make connected vehicles, car-to-car -car communications, where this vital information about location and, let's say, the, situ the situation that that vehicle is in relative to your vehicle will eventually mandate that to become law. This technology is obviously used in a lot of other situations. This is actually a cool photograph. This is from the 1990s, from the California PATH project, where they were exploring um, connected vehicles uh, for the sake of autonomous driving. So you probably are hearing a lot of announcements about autonomous driving this, autonomous driving that, assisted lane changing, self-parking uh, um, self cars. The technology is there with the advent of more and more advanced computer hardware the idea of computers making a lot of the decisions without human interventions becoming more of a reality. And it's to enhance, let's say, our driving experience as well as our safety as well. So this is a case here in California where you have eight cars all wirelessly connected to each other driving in formation. And this is a very simple application. There's actually a lot of other applications where we want the car to take over from the human user to do something very specific. So there's safety. There's convenience, there's all these sort of complex operations, and all of this is through connected vehicles. So you might ask, what's going on in the community, like the research community that I belong to in terms of connected vehicles? Actually, quite a bit. So uh, this is a cool photograph from 2011. So I somehow volunteered my um, research lab of 11 to 12 undergrad and graduate students uh, it's amazing what sort of cars uh, my students drive relative to me. So I'm the uh, Toyota Corolla at the uh, front there. And uh, you see a BMW, there's a Volkswagen Beetle, there's a Prius. Uh, the photograph was taken from a Mazda 6 or something. So I don't know wh what I'm paying my grad students, but uh, yeah, it's quite impressive, the cars that they drive. Um, but what, what we're doing here is we're trying to test the feasibility of cars. You can see the antennas, they're kind of pointed with the red arrows cars equipped with wireless devices to exchange information within 50 to 60 yards of each other. Very short range wireless communications to give sensory information of like, this is my speed, this is the lane I'm in, things to even like, oh, my, my operator does not have both hands on the wheel and such. 
Um, not the case here, but in an auto uh, autonomous application, that's where it would kick in. But what we're exploring here is, is it feasible to do wireless connectivity on the road? And it's not like Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is a much more simpler environment than, let's say, a road. What we explored is, if you have a big 48-foot-long semi right next to you, the wireless signal suddenly gets um, uh, uh, ruined quite a bit. Like, it actually gets deteriorated because you have this big metal object right next to your electromagnetic signals that, absorb, that reflect the energy negatively and creates a poor link. And there are a lot of different issues that you experience when you do wireless uh, uh, systems uh, on a road condition. So there's a lot of research and an increasing amount of attention by the wireless community exploring how do you do wireless communications on the road and with the simple, with the simple objective of being able to communicate your position and conditions like uh, that you're driving to the guy right next to you wirelessly, right? No hand signals or anything. But there's an, there are several other issues in addition to the technological ones. There's, like, you probably have seen this on some insurance commercials. You plug in this little wireless device into your car, and then it sends information wirelessly to the insurance headquarters and such. And more and more insurance companies are looking at connected vehicles as a great way of saying, are you a safe driver? If so, your premium's going down. Oh, you're not a safe driver? You're like always at 85 miles per hour? Hmm, the next time you renew your insurance, it might not be a very pretty picture, right? So what happens is your information, if you're broadcasting it out wirelessly, who knows who's listening? Who knows what's paying who's paying attention to your driving habits, what your car is doing? Worse yet, another issue is cybersecurity. More and more, you hear about people hacking into cars. Remember, 120 computers on a totally unencrypted, unprotected network. There's now one more way for folks to break into your car and do something like, oh, you're, in, uh, you're going 75 miles per hour, and your automatic transmission is uh, you know, in uh, forward gear or uh, fifth gear? No, I think you want to go in reverse, but not stop. I would hate to see what your transmission looks like if you suddenly change gears that way. It's going to be kind of scary. So there are a lot of issues associated with this technology. So with that, what I want to sort of highlight is there are tons of folks out there working on making this a reality. Soon it's going to be law, and it will help. It will give the driver a much more complete picture of the environment around him or her. It will give that great sensory awareness of what's out there and avoid possible accidents and unsafe conditions, even convenience in the case of autonomous cars. But that convenience, that safety comes with a catch. So with that, um, thank you again for your time. Thank you.